Good morning, um, or good afternoon, good night, whichever part of the world you're living in from. I'm Black Bright, and I wanted to talk today about why London is not the place for black men, or should I say black males, regardless of the age. Um, when you think that um, London is going through a gentrification process, a lot of the communities are being driven out through congestion charges, through um, high you know house prices and um, low emission charges I think in 2020 to 2021 you're going to have to be able to afford a higher registration car in order not to be subject to the low emission charges so what's happening now is that London wants to be for the rich that's my opinion if it wants to be for the rich they don't want poor people in coming in even though a third of a million people allegedly um, are attracted to London every year and can afford to live there so if if they don't want foreigners or in particular black people in the area what better way is there to make them their lives feel hopeless to um don't to throw them in prison to not give them jobs to make them feel like criminals to um set up the step the the stereotypes that they're violent they're aggressive they're gangsters they're drug dealers so that people view them negatively and therefore that even makes their chances of prosperity or success even lower why are why should their um, motivation or their aspiration be to be a musician or a fashion designer or a sports person or an entertainer why is that their goal why are they made to feel that they're not worth anything to anyone and London does that. It's doing it to our black males in particular. It's making them, it's fueling their insecurity, their sense of worthlessness, their sense of failure. And it's all kind of, um, what's it, subliminal. You know, you see a black face, you know, and on top of that, when even when they look in their homes, a lot of them don't have the male role models that they would that they need in order to say oh yeah he's done that let I can do that instead we're shown we're shown historical um, people who are successful we're shown historical people like Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey who have we got today there's Louis Farrakhan but it, does he really appeal to the majority of black males today no he doesn't so Black males, they, they, they're kind of looking at their parents and thinking, you, you sucked up to the white person. What have you got to show for it? You know, you worked all those years. You've got nothing to show for it. Do you think I'm going to be stupid like you? Do you think I'm going to be um, following your footsteps? What have you achieved? What is your success? And so they turn to crime and they turn to drugs and they turn to alcohol and they turn to gangs as a sedative, really just looking to be needed and wanted and appreciated. And those kind of things dull the reality. So why? Um, I mean, when you think about China, there are a lot of black successful businesses in China, you know, and China is a right, rise, rising nation. We've been taught to... Um, be skeptical of the Chinese and turn our backs on them but they are the rising nations why can't black men and black boys say I've had enough of London I'm going to go to China I mean of course you'd have to have a brilliant skill because China isn't going to just take anybody I mean because they're already brilliant at what they do so you'd have to be exceptional but I believe we have exceptional black males in our community who could compete in a Chinese market or in a, yeah in China so I think um, black, uh, black people in, in in particular black men in London have been conditioned to feel that that is all there is they gravitate towards London because in a weird kind of way it gives them a sense of affluence you live in London whoa it's expensive to live in London forget that they live in a ghetto forget that they live in a council estate forget that they um, 
live in inhumane conditions. They're in London and friends abroad don't have to know the kind of lifestyle they're living. I'm not saying all blacks live that way. I'm just saying that there are those who are being targeted and stereotyped who could do better elsewhere. Um, like I've said in a previous visit, in a pre previous video, you know, richness is relative. You know, we're all born with talent and that talent can make us rich. I mean, and rich doesn't have to be money. It can be um, a way of generating money, but it can also give you a feeling of self-worth. If you're doing something for yourself, if you're doing your own business, if you're, you know, self-employed, it can give you a sense of control. You don't have to feel burdened down and pushed down by society and politicians and all those kind of things. So, um, what was I going to say? Hmm. I just felt that, oh yeah, I was putting these few things why London is the place for black men, victimization, high prices, I mean, you know, forget about heroin and big drugs that they can get if they go to Glastonbury. They concentrate on the little man on the street and stop him for weed, criminalising them. You've got the Section 60 now, the SUS law. You've got, like I said, the low emission charges. Um, you've got um, a lot of black boys expelled from school. They're in prisons. There's no appreciation for their skills or their talents. And so why should, I mean, I don't think black males should look as London as their home or where they want to stay because it will drive them crazy. It will give them a sense of unfulfillment and it will make them feel as though that is all there is. The world is such a big place. Even England is a big place. And I wouldn't look at leaving London as being a failure, that you can't survive in London. I would look at leaving London as a sense of survival, as being able to do something. And I mean, if you could afford to live in London, you could afford to live anywhere. Because to be honest, I mean, I was born in London. I was born in Kensington and I was raised in uh, northwest London. And I spent a few years in America and I only came back to Bedfordshire because that's where my daughters were. But I prefer it where I am. And, you know, when I go to London, I go there to visit my, my family or my friends. But that's the extent of it. I couldn't imagine living there again. So you have to think about your mindset. What is it about London that attracts a lot of black males? It can't be success because there is no success for the majority of black men in London. So they need to be thinking outside the box and think, what can I do for myself if it's not too late that makes me feel better? What can you do for your children so that they can succeed? Raising them in London, you know, if you've got young teenage boys, is that the life you want that they go out onto the street and are going to be stopped at left, right and centre by police for no reason. It's all a drive to push people out, push foreigners out and keep London for the rich. So why wait for them to persecute and criminalise your children? Why don't you up and leave? I mean, at least leaving out of London is the first step. We might have to leave the country at some point, but at least you're on your way to kind of um, safeguarding what little dignity and pride you have. Anyway, I think that's all for now. Um, yeah, I was going to say, I don't want London to quash our men's dreams and ambitions and aspirations. Um, I don't think uh, black men should be associated with sexual prowess, um, music, entertainment, sports and fashion exclusively. Um, we know that black people are capable of so much. We see it all the time and it's always seen as some big thing, but it's in all of us to be great. All of us. When you say, and the thing is, the weird thing is, is that the rich people need poor people in order to make themselves rich. So when they drive them all out of London, what are they going to do? What are they going to do? 
who's going to do those jobs? And then they'll be crambling and like, a bit, you know, like they're scrambling to call people from a board when there's a crisis. They'll be scrambling, calling um, the foreigners uh, from outside London to come back in to pop shine their shoes and clean their houses. You know, it's not a fair world, but you can make it fairer. And that's all for now. Bye bye.